Little did George Stevenson know that when he, he travelled with Nicholas Wood to meet Edward Pease in Darlington, that he was going to change the modern world. Edward Pease was a Quaker, a Quaker industrialist based on, on Teesside and a, a great owner of uh, a number of collieries in South Southwest Durham. Of course, the Industrial Re Revolution was just starting to get going. There was an, there was a great demand for coal and he needed to get his coal to market uh, to Stockton and the, the sea beyond. So there was an imperative to, to uh, improve transport links. He had already uh, obtained parliamentary approval for a canal, but uh, George Stevenson embarked on the journey to persuade Pease that in fact a railway was going to be a far better option. George Stevenson said to Pease uh, that a locomotive could do f the work of 50 horses and he was so convincing that Pease embarked upon commissioning G George Stevenson to build the railway from Darlington to Stockton. George embarked upon the survey work and he was helped by his young son Robert Stevenson who was to go on to be one of the, the greatest uh, engineers of the 19th century. The work commenced on uh, track laying in 1822. The line was ready on the 27th of September 1825. Locomotion number one pulled Experiment, a passenger carriage, and 25 other coal wagons fitted with seats nine miles down the new line. The new railway passenger age had begun. George Stevenson had perfected steam engines in mines in North East England, uh, but he had cast his mind to uh, locomotives, which were uh, he saw as a, a great advantage to haul coal. Uh, around the coal fields and to the stairs in North East England. And of course, it was the Stockton and Darlington Railway that uh, enabled him to widen his horizons as far as uh, railway uh, engines and uh, schemes. Uh, he went on from the Stockton and Darlington Railway, of course, to engineer the Liverpool-Manchester Railway, which was the first intercity rail in the world. George Stevenson also persuaded Edward Pease that locomotives were the way forward and he persuaded Pease to form a company called Robert Stevenson and Company which went on uh, throughout the 19th and early 20th century manufacturing uh, locomotives here in Newcastle that went all over the world and of course Robert Stevenson the great civil engineer, he was the first managing partner. He became managing partner of Robert Stevenson and Company when he was 19 year old. And it was Pease that loaned him some money to invest in that company uh, because he saw the, the potential that Robert Stevenson had as a civil engineer. Of course, Robert Stevenson was president of the Institution of Civil Engineers in 1854. George was very keen that Robert should have a good education. He recognised that engineering, uh, the Industrial Revolution, were going to need um, engineers uh, and in innovation. And in fact, that started with very much with George and Robert uh, and their generation, but it continues now into the future. And civil engineers continue to change the world that we live in. Sometimes them quite glamorous projects that people involved in such as the Stockton and Darlington Railway or perhaps even Crossrail today. But there are huge uh, opportunities for young people in engineering. If we're going to solve the problems of the 21st century facing us as a society now, we're certainly going to need more engineers and more civil engineers.